just had a maybe two hour long conversation with a with a good friend of mine uh, who had watched my video that I'd made uh, on Rob Arasov's speech at Biz News, the Biz News conference, which I found out was actually in the Drakensberg. Um, he said it shifted some of his thoughts. You know, he's, he's quite an educated fellow, um, earns quite well as well. Um, and we spoke for two hours. Um, he wanted to know about state of black people's minds. He spoke about history, uh, tried to explain this concept of transcending race. Because I think race is the one emotional, mental chain that so many rich, powerful people still use today to drive agendas. But it's actually oppressing us more than it does good. Trying to get him to understand that the systems we're in are not white systems. They're systems of progression. And they are systems that have proven to be superior. And they're the reasons why certain groups in Africa and Asia and other parts of the world have been dominated. And why even when black people take over, they, they adopt these systems instead of taking on new systems. I spoke about money and I spoke about how the economy works. Uh, I referred him to a very good TED talk, talk by Yuval uh, Noah Harari, the author of Sapiens, an Israeli gent. A TED talk where he speaks about objective reality that, human, that animals live in and the fact that human beings also live in an objective reality, but they have created a fictional reality which includes human rights and the law, politics, nations and borders, companies, the money system, you know, and how that's also been very problematic, how that's been very problematic in, in affecting how the world works, so to speak. Told, spoke about the Moors, who are supposedly a dark-skinned group uh, that ruled the world at some point. Uh, spoke about Mansa Musa, who's supposedly the wealthiest man in history who happens to be black. And I was telling him that these are stories. You know, the history books that we're given are stories. A lot of the new content that's coming out now is stories. And you have to believe the story. You have to believe that Santa's real. You have to believe that tooth fairies are real. You have to believe that Adam and Eve were real and that they were white. You have to believe that Jesus Christ was real and was white. But these are stories. And the people that control and run the world, the people that drive propaganda, the people that have agendas and influence how you think, they run the world on stories. That's the fictional reality that we have. Told me a story about how he's building a home back in his, in his village. Um, building a nice uh, mansion there, borehole water, trying to be off-grid in terms of power. And he was saying this is going to be his retirement plan for when he leaves uh, the big cities. And I was telling him he doesn't realize that he's beginning the journey to bastardize the villages. You know, he's going to bring the city back to the village. And in the future... The, the villages are going to become exactly what he was running away from. Next thing, there'll be drugs, drug dealers. There'll be prostitutes. There'll be casinos. The place that he's getting now is probably relatively cheap. He probably got it from a chief for a cheap price. Trust me, title deeds are going to come. Rates and taxes are going to come. And you want to create the exact same thing that you ran away from. Not because of anything, but because the capitalist systems are so strong. I told him that one of the solutions, in my opinion, is that we need alternative systems. I keep saying this. Unfortunately, capitalism is a very, very uh, jealous bitch. Capitalism does not share for shit. So when you try to offer alternative solutions, the capitalists constantly want to crush them. But the world is going to crash and it's not a black or white issue. We're moving into AI technology, machine learning, robots that are automated and can work on their own. Black people are going to keep losing jobs. White people are going to lose jobs. Even high-earning professionals like doctors, lawyers, accountants, engineers are going to lose jobs. That's the future that we're going to see and we need a solution. And one of the solutions I said to him, and I've posted this before, arguably controversial, but I think it's so great, having human conservation reserve farms. In the same way we have the Kruger National Park and other national parks which preserve animals in their natural habitat, we need to ring fence a lot of villages, a lot of land, and make sure that technology does not disturb those places. Don't bring in the internet. Don't bring in piped water. Don't bring in electricity. Don't bring in cell phones. Leave the human beings there to live as close to nature as possible. Let them build mud huts with their hands. Let them fetch water from the rivers. Let them walk around naked. And allow an alternative space to live outside of money. Such that people in the cities, especially people that live in squatter camps, like fucking rats and cockroaches, let them be able to plug out 
and not be depressed and commit suicide over debt and not having a job and all that types of nonsense. Let them plug out and go back to these human reserves, these human zoos, so to speak, and live with nature. Allow tourists to come in and camp and see other animals and humans living in their natural habitat. Don't allow them to bring technology in. Don't allow them to bring their civilization and their laws and their courts and all their bullshit in. Preserve these spaces because we need them. About 1.5%, if not 1%, of the habitable world land that we have is where humans live. 1%. 1%. The world is, is underutilized. Underutilized. If you travel throughout South Africa, if not Africa, you will see how much land there is. And they'll tell you that it's farms. A lot of it is not farms. It's just land that's sitting. But people go cramp themselves in squatter camps in the cities because they're chasing money. Because they've told themselves that like rats and cockroaches, they cannot exist without rich human beings that can give off scraps in the form of peace jobs or a bit of money or leftover food and secondhand clothing. You don't need that. So people like myself need to find a way to influence the influencers. I need to find a way to hack the minds of the wealthy, hack the minds of politicians, hack the minds of influential people so that they can begin driving this agenda especially to the poor. Shut down schools. There are no jobs. 40% graduate unemployment. 52% youth unemployment. There are no jobs and the jobs are not coming. And even the people that are comfortably in jobs today are going to lose their jobs due to technology, automation, robots, etc. It's not going to happen. Squash schools. Let people apprentice. Let people grow up with their families. Let them be at peace. There's nothing wrong with peace. One of the things I explained to my mate as well was people like Rob obviously care about their rich white agenda. But it's not a white agenda. It's a rich agenda. It's a class agenda. And the reason they wanted to sit with the ANC was because they were like, look, we'll let some of you blacks come onto the table as long as you will assimilate to this to the system that we believe is superior. Black people have bought into the white system, the Western system, the human progress system of capitalism where you can call Uber Eats, where you can live in an Airbnb, where you have running water in a tap, where you can switch on your geese and get hot water. Black people have bought into that. It's not a white thing. It's a progress thing. Historically, a few white people pushed. And if you study history even deeper, you'll find the Indians. You'll find the Chinese. You'll find the Africans that came up with mathematics and currencies, etc. Silicon Valley today, a lot of you won't know, is a largely Asian community. In San Francisco, there's a lot of Indians and a lot of Chinese and a lot of Japanese people there. A lot of Russians as well. It's not white Americans. But you won't know that because propaganda is knocking your mind. And you just look at Mark Zuckerberg and you look at Elon Musk and you think, oh, it's these white people. Nah. Samsung is a South Korean company. Huawei is a Chinese company. And if you allow enough Africans to understand and buy into the type of engineering we have, the type of money systems the legal systems that we have, you will see a lot of innovation coming from the African continent as well, not just Elon Musk. But I just wanted to share that, spoke about a lot of things. We spoke about animal farm. I tried to explain to him why the pigs had to go back to the way the farmers lived because they had a superior system. Um, I told him how he's captured by the system and without realizing it, he suffers from cognitive dissonance because he wants to win in this capitalist system while trying to uplift poor people and unfortunately it doesn't work. I kept trying to re-emphasize how I've left blackness. Struggling with it, but I'm trying to learn because I realize that the race agenda is part of what's holding everyone back. Need to unplug the poor, as I said. And a whole host of other discussions. He mentioned the teachings of Ian Smith in Zimbabwe. He watched a talk, uh, three hours long, explaining the economy in Zimbabwe and how even the apartheid government wanted to split uh, black people and white people so that black people could carry on with their tribal systems you know, their tribal courts and build their own economic systems. But unfortunately, they obviously implemented it badly. You know, I've had my views about apartheid, which have upset a lot of people saying, I understand what they were trying to do, but the execution was bad. And obviously today, apartheid has been demonized, you know, but there's a lot of learnings we could get from that. So everyone wants the world to be better. Obviously, they've identified certain blacks which mimic the Nelson Mandela's of this world and the Sil Ramaphosa's of this world. But I think we need more alternative systems and more alternative spaces. It can't just be about capitalism and money. It can't. It's not sustainable. 
Rich people are going to be happier when I successfully unplug a lot of poor people from the system. It will mean that your tax money goes down. It will mean that crime will go down. It will mean that drugs go down. It will mean that you're happier and you're not cramped. You can have more space, more land because those people are living subsistence lives in villages and protected spaces that preserve human natural living. Anyways, I'll stop there. I just wanted to share those thoughts. Have a great Friday and please stay warm because it's very gloomy and rainy and cold in Johannesburg. Pin you all the black pen. Cheers.